Hey, I'm Orange Plasma, and welcome to The Scrap Guide. And this is a complete guide to your scrap mechanic gaming. But okay, this is the first episode, and um, basically what this is, is I am going to be teaching you how to play scrap mechanic from beginnings to very elite playing. Well, I'm not an elite player, I'm just going to say that. But I do have quite a lot of knowledge on Scrap Mechanic. I've been playing it for a long time. So I hope I can teach you some things. Anyway, whether you've just bought it, or you're looking to buy it, or you're just looking for some more tips, this one is probably going to help you a bit. But I'm just going to assume that you've just you just loaded up Scrap Mechanic for the first time. I'm going to walk you through it. So, anyway, this is what you'll see when you first load into Scrap Mechanic. There'll be this screen here with uh your out uh, your your person <laughs> yep your well usually people call it a dwarf because it's so small cartoonishly small compared to its body size in the top top left you have the scrap mechanic logo and you have four options the first option you probably want to do is options first option you want to do is options yeah okay that makes sense Anyway, controls, um, basically, these are just your standard controls for everything. You can just scroll through them and have a look what's there. If you want to set a new control or reset a control, click on it and then press the key bind or the button, the button clicker or whatever, whatever button on your mouse you want. Uh, and then it will set it to that button. The There are two options for every action. Both options can be set to a different keybind or mouse mouse button to control the same thing. Anyway, audio. I should have music off, but you can just mess around with that really. Display. Um, different types of windows. Full screen. Whenever you tab out, it disappears. Borderless window, when you tab out, it stays there. And window is just a window you can move around and do whatever with. Different types of cameras. Follow camera. This follows your. This moves with your vehicle. So when your vehicle turns, this camera turns, but only if it's turning left or right. Free free camera doesn't move at all with your vehicle, and strict follow camera moves with your vehicle, but left, right, up, and down. Not roll, but left, right, up, and down though. Uh, resolution res re resolution is a. Uh, I usually have it on max uh, you can you can limit your frame rate if you want just check what your monitor's got on it brightness you probably don't want it too low otherwise it's way too saturated and too high it just becomes really white um, I like it on a good 30 it's quite bright it helps at night time because warning night time does get quite dark in this game anyway graphics you probably want all of them on like medium there isn't really most of the stuff doesn't really do anything apart from dynamic lights. It means if you're holding a light emitting source, it shines around you. For 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 example, when you're holding a glow stick, it will shine light around you. If you turn it off, it won't do that. It will help a tiny bit with performance, but it won't be as helpful. The other, the only other thing you need to uh, well the other other two things really, foliage density. This is how much grass and bushes are on the ground. Draw distance. This is how far away things appear, like things start to get textured. Uh, basically, it, if you lower those, it usually draw distance usually helps on the memory, I think, and the graphics a bit. Foliage, I think, just helps on the graphics. Anyway, that's all of the setting stuff. You can go to the main screen now. And I think the next thing you probably want to do is character. Which over here you'll see you have lots of different faces and you have whatever skin tone you want. So if you want, you know, different colours for your person. And over here you have hair. You can have different colours for your hair as well. So if you want pink hair, if you want red hair, orange hair, well ginger I guess it would be. Anyway, uh, you have different hairstyles as well. Uh, you can have no hair if you want. Facial hair, same thing, different all different types of styles. You can have none if you want. 
you have like beard or anything. Anyway, hat and torso and gloves and legs and shoes and jack and backpack. The reason I've grouped all of those together is because when you first load in the game, you won't have anything apart from the usual. So on hat you'd have nothing. Torso you'd have the burnt crash mechanic jacket. On gloves you'd have the crash mechanic gloves and so on and so forth for the rest of them. Um, but once you actually unlock an item in game, you can start to get more clothing. Anyway, once you're done with that and you're ready to hop in, you can press play. So you have challenge, creative, and survival. Challenge is basically you can create either there are some pre made challenges and you can also download or create your own challenges for other people. So you have over here the master mechanic trials, they are, they are built in. Basically, I'll do another video on this later, but basically, you just have to build a vehicle within the uh, limits and try and get to the end. Creative. This is just creative mode. You can um, build whatever really you want. There's no limitations, no hunger, no health, no limits on building materials. Challenge is similar to that, except you do have a limit on building materials um, because that's part of the challenge. Survival. That is the one I'm going to be focusing on. So what you want to do, you want to do this. So I've already started creating the game because I kind of screwed up my recording like twice. Well, almost three times actually, probably earlier. So yeah, um, so if you want to make a new one, type the name down here and then press new game. Or if you already have one, it shows you like play time and time date. You can just press play. And that will load you into the game. And loading times vary between, you know, game to game. Well, not game to game, computer to computer, really. But yeah, just gonna wait for it to load. I'll be back with you once it's loaded. So once you've loaded in, this is what you'll see. Now, some graphics might take a, a few moments to load, uh, some textures, but. What you'll be, you'll be by your crashed spaceship, which is over here, if you can tell that it was a crashed spaceship. Um, and you can go inside if you want. You'll have some trees, forests around you really. There'll be a path this way and a path that way. And the first thing you probably want to go and do is just have a look around your ship. It's going to be a lot of fire, and that's one of the first challenges you have to solve. Um, so. If you actually walk down this way, there is certain items. Now, controls, I should probably mention, is W for forwards, A, left, D, right, S, backwards. If you hold shift while going forwards, you sprint. Um, control is crouch. You can low down. Um, space is jump. You can jump and crouch at the same time. It's a bit weird. Um, so I for inventory is these are all these controls are all standard, but I for inventory, uh, and that's all you really need to know for now. But H for handbook. Just note that at the time of this recording, this handbook is an old handbook, so it doesn't have most of the modern things in. Oh, Steam alerts. Anyway, what you want to do is probably run down here, and to pick up things. Oh, yeah, I should also forget. Um, I forgot to mention uh, if you do left click you can swing your hammer right click nothing at the moment or well left left click can also place on your lift okay basically left click is for placing blocks right click deleting blocks or parts uh, but with a hammer just uh, left click just hits it anyway you want to go up to this bucket and you can use left click to pick it up now you have a bucket if you press F, you can place it down, but otherwise it'll just act a like a bucket. So I'm going to go down. If you go into here, you can press left mouse button and it picks up some water. Press left mouse button and you can throw some water. If you go in, and if you hold it in the water, it fills up because that makes sense. There's also a chest here. Oh well, 
technically it's not a chest, it's classed as a crate, I think. A crate, but um I call it a chest. So if you whack it, it'll explode. And you get some items. You can either use E or right mouse button to pick it up. E is like the main main button for like using items. So if you want to get in a seat or like change the settings on an engine, um you can just press E. Anyway, if you want to, you can just um, take out pull the soil if you want. There's already a plant growing here. But yeah, this is soil. Um, you can either place it down. Once you pick it up, you get it into here. Or you can press F to place it down in the bag itself. But yeah, um, you don't really need it here. You should probably save it for like later because you don't really want to be farming at this point. You can do. Might be a good idea. But... You probably, I usually save it for later. But yeah, if you want to, you can just start taking part of the shack. Um, most things here you can destroy and pick up that are built. So, so for, for example, over here, you can like destroy the walls, the roof. Pretty much everything the shack's made out of. You can't destroy the fences, so. And you can also destroy the wheelbarrow. So, um, you're probably going to want the wheel and the bearing. At least you can take apart the entire thing if you want, but we can probably just salvage parts from that later. You might also want the light. But yeah, now you have two buckets. If you, you can also drag to move stuff around. Also, another thing: if you drag with uh, right click, you can take one out of a stack, which is useful if you want to play multiplayer and give something to a friend or something like that. Anyway. If you fill up the two buckets, you can run down here, back to your ship, and if you throw the buckets with um, left mouse button again, which throws the water out of it, you can actually put out the fire. So, throw it, and put it out, throw it again, put it out, there's another wheel here. There's also, look out, because there's a lot of things in the ship you can actually pick up and take. For example, on the shelf. There is some cardboard. I should probably introduce the um difference between parts and blocks. So this part, this is a part. These these like switches and lights. If you want to destroy them, you have to click and hold, and it does the um circly mouse thing. Watch watch my cursor. Not my cursor, but the um the the uh, plus in the center. You see the white line which swirls around it. When you destroy it, they'll come up if it's a part. If it's not a part, if it's a block, you when you hold down right click, you can either let go and it takes that one thing. Oh, is it just lagging? I think my game's lagging. Oh yeah. Oh, it's glitched out. Okay, um, I'm back. Uh, there was a burst of glass because somebody I didn't want actually to try to join the game. I uh, got rid of those. They're being a nuisance, but that's fine now. Yeah, so um, just be warned, this is multiplayer, but if you do do multiplayer, it will get a bit laggy. And also be warned, because anybody who is on your friend's list, if they have scrap mechanic, can join your game at any point, even if you don't invite them. So that's something to be wary of, and I mean, it's a good thing that it reminded me. Anyway, what you probably want to do is just keep on putting out the fires in the ship. It's not really necessary to put out all the small fires, but you might, you might just want to do it anyway. So, just run down here, either walk in the water and fill it up, or just use uh, left mouse button to pick up the water. Anyway, so over here you've got this like entrance sort of thing, it looks like a busted door sort of thing, like a bulkhead. But yeah, um, most of the stuff is fine, I think that's most of the fire. And you see, you've got over here. When you hover over it, it said requires it says requires power. And requires master battery. Over here, it says like drawing. You get the master battery and you put it in that slot. So that's what you have to do. Over here, it's sort of the uh, driving station spit. It, I think I think I think it's telling me that something went wrong, and I think I can see that something went wrong in the ship. Um, <laughs> by the looks of it. Anyway, you can just take some stuff. These handlebars you can take. That's pretty much it from in here. Well, apart from these two 
uh, milkshakes. They're called sun shakes. That's basically just a milkshake. Over here, some beds. You sleep in them. In this game, you can't skip the night. Beds are primarily for respawn points. So, well, last bed you sleep in is your respawn point. If you don't have your respawn point set in a bed, you'll just um, probably just uh, either respawn the last bed you slept in, or you'll just respawn out the front there where you spawned originally. There's a lot of stuff you can take from here. So take the locker, the broken microwave, microwave. There's some stuff on the shelf. But yeah, um, that's my stuff in there, and obviously there's stuff in from in here. So um, now, what you need to do, as you saw earlier, is you need to go get the master battery. And the thing about that is, you might have to fight a few bots. The first bots you have to fight, those chests, I broke those. Well, those crates, sorry, I broke those with a hammer. Got some new stuff. They'll randomly spawn some crates down here. I think it's a random amount, because usually you get more than just three. And there it is. The first spot in the natural habitat. Sneak up on it. Sneak, uh, I don't think crouching actually allows you to sneak up. Although maybe it does, because it doesn't seem to be noticing me. Oh, yeah. D okay, sneaking apparently does work. But yeah, if you can just whack it with your hammer, and it breaks apart into all the little pieces. And you can get some circuit board from it. Basically, if you didn't get a very good look at it, it's like a green, a green little thing with eight legs. Like a spider. But a very big metal spider. There'll be some more chests here for you to break open, get some loot. You want all this loot. But if you also walk up here, there's another bucket because you don't have enough buckets already. Already. And there's also these uh, these are usually called ruins. These um big structures which you loot for items. Anyway, here's another bot. But yeah, so I've got like a. A whip on the top with some electricity. Oh. These green bots are quite easy to do. Spe um, especially if you just sort of back away from them. But yeah, there's some, there's some crates. And this thing. Normally people... It's a bit confusing when you first start it. But if you press E, it's actually a chest. And that's basically an alternative to crates. You find loot in there. Over here are some Haybot Spines. They're actually where you get scrap metal from. Haybot is the the common hay, the common bot. It's the, the, the most commonly found bot probably. Um, it's a bit harder than greenies. But yeah, what you can do is if you hold E, you start to refine it with your hand tool. You can either do that, or if you hold right mouse button, you can pick it up. And then, if you press right mouse button again, it drops it, or you can actually place it. And the difference is, if you drop it, it's loose, and you can like hit it around with your hammer. Or if it's not loose, it's like if it's uh, placed down, it's fixed in place. But anyway, I would recommend uh, just to refine both of these because when you are holding it, you can't actually uh, pick up another one, and also you can't run, so it's a bit of a uh, bit of a hindrance. Anyway, just collect these chests and what do I spot over here? Oh look, it's the master battery. Very good, you can just pick it up with the right mouse button, like how you did with the buckets. And that, I think that's most of, the, most of the crates down here. What you can do is you can bounce beam your way up here. And let's see, is there anything else around here? Looks like there's a spine, probably shouldn't find that. And you can see down in the bottom right corner, I get some scrap metal blocks. Those are, mm, they're pretty important. You need them for most like switches and buttons. Anyway, you can, once you get up here, you can see there's another chest. And there's a crate over here. Oh, yep, I fell down, okay. Also, you should probably note, there is full damage in this game. And there's sometimes a chest, sometimes a crate up there. So what you can do is if you place down a lift, get on it, and use. Uh, I I rebind it to 
um, minus and equals, but you can usually it's up and down. I can just guess up here. It's a bit difficult to make that jump. But there's nothing on this uh, this layer, but there might be a crate up here. So yeah, it's like a mini elevator. You can get get around up and down places. But yeah, you can fall from a decently high height without having any, having any fall damage. See the crash ship? Yeah, so it's a big plume of smoke. Um, but if you've raided everything, you basically just run all the way back down again. Oh, there's another chest crate over here. Keep on calling them chests. Chest is like the common name. And anyway, there is another place over there. You might not want to tackle it yet before you go back and place down the master battery. Uh, over at that other place, there is hay bolts, which is the um, it'll be quite difficult, especially if it's your first time. But yeah, um, if you run back to the crash ship, you have your master battery in hand. Then you're gonna notice a lot of weird things from these crates. You have seeds, those are used for farming, obviously. Farming is a major component of this game. Component kits, those are used for upgrading parts and components. As it, the name suggests, handles. You know, these are just things on the ships. There's a lot of weird things. I have some scrap wheels here. Those are going to be used for your first car. Uh, you have potatoes. Potatoes cannot actually be eaten. They're just for ammo for potato guns, which is you get later in the game. But if you do have some food and you are getting thirsty at this point, if you hold down left mouse button, you eat it, and just a note of warning, tomatoes, they give you more liquid, double the amount of liquid than it does hunger. Carrots, double the amount of hunger than it does liquid. Red beets, equal on both. And that's applied to lots of other foods later on. But yeah, if you, with the left mouse button, you can place down the battery. And you have power, which is great. It's got a weird noise, this thing. But yeah. If you go over here, it's got an exclamation mark, you press E, and then you can press right mouse button or E again, and you can pick up the logbook. Now, if you press L, you get this sort of sort of scrapbook sort of thing, but it tells you some information. There's the crashed ship, there's the mechanic station, which you'll see later on, and those are the only two things right now. Um, this is work in progress, this entire game, so just note. Lots of things may be a bit broken, but it also gives you the time and what day it is. So for me, it's day zero, almost day one, because almost, and also another thing you should note, every minute is a second. So every minute, it goes up by a second. Every, every second, it goes up by a minute. But yeah, that's really useful, mostly for just turning you away. Also, if you do have any beacons, you can disable them and turn them on and off right there. Anyway, so if you go over here, if you press E, here's a craft bot. It's like a nice face, but it's not, not, it, yeah, it's got like a, it's got quite cute, I guess you could say. It's face, it's a, it's heads in sort of a hammer shape. It just sits there, and yeah, if you can craft some things. Scrap driver's seat, scrap gas engine, scrap seat, scrap wheels, bearings, cardboard, Switch, button, connect tool. The first thing you're going to want to make is your connect tool. That's vital for if you want to do any wiring at all. Wiring at all. Um, don't worry, wiring shouldn't scare you. It's actually very simple once you get the hang of it. Um, uh, also, handbook can help you with this. Um, you see, wiring sort of just like it gives you some what you need to do when you make a basic car. But yeah, you need a connect tool to even make a car. Second thing is, you're going to want to, uh, you're going to need a scrap driver's seat, a scrap gas engine. Uh, you're going to need a scrap seat if you want more than one person to be able to sit on your car. Uh, scrap wheels, um, you're going to need some more of those eventually. Uh, bearings, you can need those for your wheels and for turning. Cardboard, 
that's just there if you want to make extra extra blocks for your car. Switch button, those are if you press a button, um it, it like goes off once you let go. Switch, when you press E it turns on and it turns off again. You can hit you can hook both of those up to a seat, which then once you press like it gets key binders so when you're in the seat you can press one and whatever's hooked up to that number one will get activated. Anyway, once it's done you can press collect and you have your connect tool. And you can't really use any use it on anything now, but if you uh for example have a light and you put it down, you can see it's got connection. So you can connect that to like a button or something. And once you do that, you can it the button controls the light. Sim pretty simple. Anyway. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need these two first mainly. Let's see, what do you need? For for a seat you need more wood. And now probably get in this soon. But the first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a tree. And now we get to the lumber part of this game. Uh because if you want because uh, if you want to in this game you can actually do mining and lumber. I say if you want to, it's quite an important part. But if you just whack a tree, um, it'll just break down and the whole tree will fall down. And as you break apart the tree, it'll break into like these smaller pieces. Um, so what I usually do is I go and break them down once, all the way across. It's in a bit of a bush there. It's also getting night time. Night time's not very good for recording. Hope you can see everything there. I, pro I kind of need a light. While I'm doing this. Let's get let's get a light set up. Pointing over there. Anyway, yeah. So you possibly see something more now. So once you have these ones, oh, it's telling morning anyway. Okay, never mind. You can break them down even further, and these are called a uh, resource. I guess you call them logs or sticks. Uh, but you saw they're basically in the same shape as the haybot spines, and that's because those haybot spines are also the resources of scrap metal. These ones are resources of either scrap wood or normal wood. Because uh, basically, if you have a large tree, things called a redwood. Um, well, I know it's a red redwoods are big trees in real life, but like, I'm not sure what it's called in the game. I think in the game it's called a redwood as well. But yeah, if you get one of those, uh, when you refine it, it actually turns straight into the uh, wood form, not just scrap wood. But yeah, if you hold E, just like the uh, haybot hay spine, it refines it and you get scrap wood. You get 10 material from each of these resource sticks. So, yeah, you just keep on refining them. And then you get lots of wood. Once you get enough wood, you can make the driver's seat. I'm pretty sure it's 120 wood. So, 12. That should be at least, probably no more than one tree. But yeah, if you, when you chop down a tree, the first thing you need to do to initiate it, just whack anywhere on the tree. And that'll break it off. If you want to break lower than that again, just hit a bit lower and you can keep on going down. Mo all parts of the trees are breakable. Um, there are certain trees which you can't destroy. Um, well, for example, the redwoods, you need a saw blade to chop them down their first set. After that, you can chop them twice more with hammer or with saw blades. Um, and there's some massive trees, like absolutely massive trees, which you can't destroy. They're sort of too big and too powerful, I guess. In the lore, in the lore of the game, they're too big and too powerful for you to destroy. But in reality, they're just they're just terrain assets, um, not parts. Anyway, while refining this, I think I've got enough. Maybe, just a guess. Oh, I don't. Okay. Yep. So if you keep on refining, you get lots and lots of wood. Um, you're gonna need wood for the car. You can you can make your base up the base of the car of wood, or you can make it out of cardboard. If you craft all of your wood into cardboard for the base of the car, uh, a you won't be able to use it in the crafting recipes, but also 
you will get twice as much. Because uh, scrap wood, five scrap wood goes into ten cardboard. Which is very good. Yeah, if we keep on doing this. And I think I should have enough after this one. Once I've done this. And 130. So if you run all the way back. And you can start craft it. And our tip, if you are... Oh, I also realised it's actually 100. So, a little bit much. Anyway, if you're running, a good tip. If you press enter, it'll save whatever current whatever action you're currently doing on the keyboard. So I'm I'm hands free right now. Oh, it's, it's just doing it by itself. I'm running by myself. But yeah, if you just press uh, and uh, if you press enter to open the chat, then you can also press enter and close it again, and that saves whatever you're doing on your keyboard. It's sort of a glitch, but it's also really helpful if you want to run a very long way. I don't have inventory space so that's another thing so I'm gonna start piling some stuff up and you, you might be able to hear some notification sounds that's just my computer um but yeah this locker is uh, helpful because some things are stackable so you see here I put five in one stack on the ground and that's very cool but other things aren't stackable for example if I have any component kits, you put them down separately, even though, even though they stack in your inventory. And lockers can be helpful for that because it makes them take less space. Um, okay, yeah, and basically what you really want to do, most things can be stacked on the ground. Uh, so if you want to clear inventory, you just start placing stuff down. So, I'll put my wheels over here. Probably don't need toilet paper right now. Radio can go there. Turn the radio on if you want. Um, let's see, put the calendar there. This is just a temporary home. We're going to try and build a car to get out of here, so. Because you don't really want to stay at, your, stay at the old place. You can't really do much here. Also, um, circuit boards can't actually be stacked on the ground as well. So you might want to keep that in mind. Neither can handles. Anyway, um, probably don't need a mug. Seeds don't really need. And plant pot. Yeah, so now you've cleared your inventory. And this is probably where I'm going to end the video if I just... How much... How long is this video so far? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to probably end the video here. So what have we done? We've... Uh, survived we worked out controls we now also we've gone got the master battery we've got this place powered up we've got the log book we salvaged most of the stuff from inside of here we put out all the fire and that's pretty much all, all, all we've done but that's also quite a lot but yeah um thank you for watching i'll see you in the oh, also duck you can pick up the duck if you want and some pipes as well i usually miss that i don't know why just something but yeah I'll see you, and my and the duck will see you as well next time. Goodbye. Thank you.